that those of you who are holding dollars, you surely might go into losses because uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. The US dollar is in big trouble and an economic war is brewing behind the scenes. Here's why and what it means for you. The US dollar has been the backbone of the global economy for decades. Many countries around the world use the US dollar as their official currency. And ever since 1944, the US dollar has been considered the world's reserve currency. This means that global trade is often denominated in US dollars and international transactions also often happen in USD settlements. Back in 1944, 44 countries agreed to a global monetary system which would be underpinned by the US dollar, which at the time was backed by gold. But as we know, in 1971, President Nixon ended the convertibility of dollars to gold as the US was experiencing severe inflation alongside slowing economic growth. By no longer having each US dollar backed by one equivalent unit of gold, that allowed them to have more flexibility and control over the issuing of currency, allowing them to print more money and get themselves out of sticky situations. But unfortunately for the US, this marked the beginning of the decline. And ever since then, we've seen significant inflation as well as the expansion of US debt. And that has inevitably led to a major turning point, which we are now seeing right in front of our eyes in the year 2023. To understand what's happening to the US dollar dominance globally in 2023, you need to understand what BRICS is. BRICS is a group of five nations consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The term BRIC was first coined into 2001 by Goldman Sachs economist Jim O'Neill to describe the four countries with rapidly growing economies that he predicted would become dominant in the world by the year 2050. South Africa was then subsequently added to the group in 2010. Although the coining of the term BRIC back in 2001 was mostly semantics, since then we've seen a stronger alliance start to form with these nations working together in an economic sense to help foster stronger global economic economic terms for these countries. Today, BRICS countries account for 42% of the global population and 32% of global GDP. G7, which is regarded as the opposing political alliance, consists of the countries Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States, has now started to wane in dominance compared to BRICS. As you can see from the graph in front of you, BRICS dominance in terms of the total GDP GDP share is starting to flip the share of the G7 as the BRICS nations continuously gain power. But why does it matter if these nations gain power? Well, because they have an alliance and they're strategically working together to implement measures to better their own currencies, financial futures. But one of the ways that they are doing this is by accepting de-dollarization and starting to settle trade payments in varying currencies. Back in 2014, Russia and China signed a deal to bypass the US dollar. They no longer wanted to rely on the US dollar for international trade and investment. The trend is called de-dollarization. We are witnessing a rapid shift away from US dollars in international trade. We can see this because China's yuan has replaced the dollar as the most traded currency in Russia. China and France have even completed the first yuan settled LNG trade, signaling the end of the use of the dollar for energy trades. We've seen China and Brazil pledge to use their own currencies to pay for trade deals. And even Saudi Arabia is now entering a trade alliance with China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and four Central Asian nations. But the most crazy thing of all is that the BRICS nations want to develop their own rival currency to the US dollar. Now, whether this will be a success or not, no one knows. But what we do know is that they're actively working on ways to develop a new currency together. And we can see politically their alliance is only growing stronger. Now this August in South Africa, the BRICS nations are set to meet to discuss the potential implementation of a new currency. So things appear to be ramping up very quickly for the legitimacy of a potential rival currency to the US dollar. The leader of China, Xi Jinping, and Vladimir Putin recently met in Moscow. Listen to the final few sentences of their exchange. 
变局体部分。Did you hear that? They're saying that right now we are seeing a change that we haven't seen in 100 years. These are absolutely crazy times for the future of politics and economics. Ray Dalio posted a graphic which contextualizes where the US dollar may sit in terms of its life cycle. Because throughout history, we've seen currencies rise to prominence and then fall off. We saw this with the power of the Dutch economy. Then we saw this with the power of Britain. And now Ray Dalio is alluding to the fact that the US US economy has peaked and is now seeing a decline, and we're seeing a shift of power from the West to the East. And this graphic would allude to the fact that while the US is fading off, China is starting to rise. So that leads to the question: Why are these nations? Potentially conspiring against the U.S. and why are they looking at settling transactions in other currencies and why are they looking at creating their own currency instead of just using the U.S. dollar? It's mainly because the U.S. economy is extremely unstable. Rampant inflation in the U.S. has become a significant worry, and so have the liquidity issues that are facing the U.S. economy. A looming banking crisis in the U.S. is definitely scaring foreign traders enough so to want to decrease alliance from America. Now it's. It's probably not only just the US dollar showing a bit of weakness that is leading to some of these political changes. It could also be a strategic move, a sort of economic warfare to go after power. Because at the end of the day, money is power. So if you can take away the US dollar dominance, you also take away the US's political dominance worldwide. But it's hard to argue that the US. Hasn't done this to themselves. Look at the amount of federal debt. You can see debt has been spiraling out of control. Jerome Powell even called to raise the debt ceiling, and this is in the midst of crazy inflation. So really, the only solution over the past couple decades to the U.S.'s problems has been to print more money and print more money and expand the balance sheet and create more liquidity. But that just causes problems as the divide between the rich and the poor continues to grow. Rampant inflation significantly. Starts to hurt the economy, and eventually you may see that reflected in unemployment numbers, and could cause general instability across the entire nation. So we really are at a crossroads right now, and I think other countries are starting to realize this and want to essentially hedge、uh, against a potential U.S. dollar collapse by creating other alternatives and implementing systems that can help them avoid systemic risk from a potential U.S. dollar collapse. Kenyan President William Ruto recommended his citizens who hold U.S. US、dollars to get rid of them. Listen to what he had to say. The dollar constraints, not just in our economy, but globally. That as a government, we have uh, made uh, innovative intentions to ensure that we ease the burden of、uh, availability of dollar in our market. We just concluded last week a market-driven arrangement in our fuel sector that will see Kenya. Access all our fuel、uh, needs on a deferred six-month credit. That will eliminate a demand of 500 million dollars every month from this market. For the people who work numbers, I am giving you free advice that those of you who are holding dollars, you surely might go into losses. <laughs> you better, you better、uh, do what you must do. Because、uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. I mean, personally, I wouldn't take economic advice from a Kenyan, but maybe the underlying point has some truth to it. So, is this reason to panic? Should you get rid of all your U.S. dollars? What should you do? Well, of course, this video isn't financial advice, but what I would personally say is. These things take a while to play out. The U.S. dollar is likely not going to collapse overnight. In fact, a shift this big would take decades to commence. What we're seeing is probably. The beginning of this process, probably the beginning of a slow decline for the U.S. economy, but they're going to fight back. They're going to do everything in their power to maintain power. They're not going to give up without a fight. So I don't think this is the death of the U.S. or the true death of the dollar yet, but it certainly is worrying signs. And if you were a U.S. politician or even a U.S. citizen, you do have a right to be extremely concerned with what's happening at the moment. I believe one of the only true solutions to this problem that we have in the world right now 
is a form of hard money like Bitcoin. I do believe all of this uncertainty only bodes well for Bitcoin's narrative as becoming a true form of digital gold. You can't create more. It has a limited supply. It can't be tampered with. It's decentralized. It's not in the control of one party or government who can print more of it. It really just does make sense. And since the world operates in a digital realm these days, most people spend their time on computers. Most people transact on their phones or on their computers. It just makes sense that Bitcoin can rise to prominence just as gold did as a store of value in the digital realm instead of in the physical realm. So I view gold as a very good long-term investment, but I also view Bitcoin as potentially being able to do what gold's done over time and maintain resilience over time. Now, to this day, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen Bitcoin kick in as a true inflation hedge. For the most part, it has been correlated to risk assets. It generally follows equities like the NASDAQ. But I think one day we do see a shift. If I had to put my money on an asset for the long term that wasn't going to devalue and it wasn't gold, it would certainly be Bitcoin. Of course, that's just my opinion. It's not financial advice. You have to do what makes sense for you. But I believe Bitcoin to be a potential solution um, to this issue. And even if it's not a solution, at least it could be somewhere to park your money that you not know is just going to be printed to death as it has a limited supply. I'm a big believer in taking control of your own finances and owning your own financial future. So I do a lot of my Bitcoin trading on decentralized exchanges that allow you to keep custody of your own assets. I think one really good option for this is Apex Pro. It's a decentralized exchange built on layer two using Starkware. So it's extremely fast, has low fees and will allow you to trade Bitcoin with a variety of options. So that would be a place that I would personally look to trade Bitcoin. And then also, if you wanted to trade other crypto assets and you're more interested in crypto in general, and you also want a DEX where you can spot trade, I also recommend KyberSwap. There's a link in the description to both. This will aggregate transactions for you to allow you to get fast execution and low fees. So it will automatically route your transaction to find you the best possible price in the best possible place. So you're not wasting money unnecessarily on inefficient trade routes. So link in the description to Apex to trade Bitcoin and other crypto assets and KyberSwap as well. Although obviously it's EVM compatible, so it's not Bitcoin compatible. You can still trade other crypto assets and you can even trade wrapped Bitcoin or bridge Bitcoin if you want exposure to Bitcoin um, on a MetaMask wallet because Bitcoin exists and operates, of course, on the Bitcoin network. So let me know what you think of all of this in the comments below. Do you think this is the end of the US dollar as the global world reserve currency? Or do you think it's going to show resilience and bounce back? I'd be very interested to hear your opinion in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the show, of course, make sure to subscribe and click that like button as well as turning on that post notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. I will see you in the next one. Hope you have a lovely day. Peace out.